I'm very excited. Um, Nate and Caitlin are going to come talk to us. They are, uh, they r- uh, run together the FCA chapter that we're hosting at our church, and um, it's just been awesome for me to build a relationship with both of them. Uh, I met Nate while I was having brunch like a year ago or something. Uh, very randomly, he sat right next to me, and we just made a connection that's kind of grew into a partnership. So can we welcome uh, Nate and Caitlin, and, and we're really excited that you guys are here. Well, good morning. We're so excited to be with you this morning. Uh, A little bit of just a quick bio on us. I'm from just south of Lexington, uh, Kentucky, and actually took a dual credit class at Asbury College uh, back in the day, my senior year of high school. So we have some Methodist connections. And then Caitlin's from northern Kentucky, and her grandfather was a longtime uh, pastor at Erlinger Methodist as well. So we kind of have some ties there. Uh, a big part of our story was we grew up in the church. We absolutely loved sports, and that took us both to Moorhead State University as athletes. I was a baseball player. She was a highly decorated volleyball player, and we actually met through this group called the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Uh, she was a year ahead of me, already leading, and that really kind of set us on a path where it's come full circle uh, to where we want to kind of pay it forward and, and offer that faithful community during such a critical point uh, in somebody's life, which is college. So even though we came through the church, we had our own seasons of struggle. Uh, during college, it can be a very dark place, a college campus, as you might know. And uh, man, that's just our heart to really serve and kind of um, yeah, bring Jesus and bring the light of the gospel into that, in that dark space. I'm going to go off script for just a second, which terrifies him, Um, but he mentioned my grandfather, who's a a long-term pastor in in the Methodist Church, and my grandmother, who passed away just over a year ago. That was her favorite song, God Will Take Care of You, and so how beautiful is that? It was just, um, the Lord just blesses us with things like that, doesn't he? And I'm sitting in a Methodist church, and I grew up in in one that my my papa preached in with her next to me. And that was just a really sweet moment of remembering that God will take care of you in big ways and small. Um, so as you may know, as you might not know, the house that you guys own in your community, we are now residing in as a ministry. So that's not where we're living personally, but that's where we're operating out of. And it has been such a blessing in a way that God has taken care of us. Um, and so I just want to share a little bit about our vision for that with you. As a ministry, as he, as he said, we're, we're kind of running after all of Northern Kentucky, but specifically this campus is where kind of I'm spending most of my time with NKU athletes. And like he said, it's a dark place. Many of you probably spent some time in a college environment. We sure did. And even with roots of faith, even with walking into college with a heart for Jesus, and I had a, a mind and in, in mission I still was derailed. I struggled without community. We're built for it. We need it. And we need people to not just pour into us, but we need people to empower us to go out and make more disciples, right? Not to just stay stagnant in our faith. And so that's our our heart. Our aim is to engage the people of this campus, specifically the athletes and the coaches, to equip them with God's word. that They wouldn't just believe, but that they would act in that belief. And that then they'd be empowered to lead on this campus and then beyond, because the beauty of college is we're sending people out every four years, so they're going, and so we want to make sure they're going on purpose somewhere. Uh, we believe that sports are an incredible vehicle, but it can, it can crash people's lives because it's a really bad idol, um, but it can be a really great vehicle of influence for the gospel, and so we want to use that for God's glory, and we're thankful for the way, Cameron, for the way you have partnered with us and given us just a space. We had our first big huddle. That's what we call things because we're athletes, so instead of a gathering, we huddle. Uh, we had our first big huddle on Monday night, and we had 50 athletes crammed in. I don't know if you guys have been in that house. You should come check it out. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, if you can do the new slide there, we can. Yeah, yeah so that if any time we're there, Monday through Friday, normally around 9 to 3, the doors are open. So seriously, if you guys want to come by, we got a little coffee shop. Come grab a coffee. We, we try to treat our athletes well and give them a, a space to study and to just build community. But on Monday nights, we have huddles, and we just worship with them. Um, every other week, we do a small huddle, which is where we do breakouts. And so that house has, like, three offices upstairs, a living room, a cafe, a basement, a conference meeting room. And we are splitting into those spaces to open the to God with athletes leading their peers, which has just been a really powerful thing. So that's kind of what we're doing and who we are. Yeah. And uh, this past Monday, we had uh, several of our students give testimonies um, through the semester and what God's been doing in their life, but we also recently had a college athlete uh, retreat. It was a statewide retreat from all the colleges across 
uh, the state, and we had uh, one of the highest numbers of groups going. We were super excited about that, and God just really met a lot of people in that place. We had first-time decisions for Jesus. We had people coming back just more on fire to reach their teammates and to be uh, equipped and take new steps of obedience and new steps of leadership. So we were just really encouraged and uh, just, yeah, just really ask for, for your prayers uh, as they continue to journey along, and we try to, uh, to keep, you know, making leaders that make leaders. Uh, just a real quick, um, just uh, announcement as we, as we kind of wrap. If you want to be more connected, it looks like you guys as a church have figured out the QR code situation. I saw those in the in the pews and everything, so I think COVID helped out a little bit with all the restaurant menus, the QR codes, but uh, the code in here is just a survey just to let us know a little bit more of who you are and if you want to be added to our email list and some other options on ways you can get connected and support uh, what we're doing, but we really believe God is in this. Uh, we don't think it was by accident that that we just happened to meet each other over in uh, a, a place that we don't, neither one of us really go to often and really just felt like the Lord's been been weaving our stories together so so grateful for your all support um and yeah anytime you drive by the house feel free to pray for us or, or stop in and get a tour so thank you guys so much thank you